Welcome to Mark's Madness, joined now by Mark Miller for another season of high school football. We're getting ready to break it all down. It certainly is an exciting time. Hard to believe it's here, but uh, scrimmages are over. It's time to play for real. It is almost time yeah. to play for real. This yeah. Friday we'll get started and we'll get you set up for all those games. But with the beginning of a new season first, Mark, let's start mm -hmm. talking about some rule changes. Yeah. There are a couple this year that of note. Yeah, and, and as you'd expect, they're all revolved around safety. Ten rule changes in all, but really three that I think the fans will notice, uh, and only if they're called, the first couple. Uh, targeting, uh, it, these are trickle down from the upper levels, you know, the pros and then the college and, and high schools getting there, and that's good, uh, but you're not allowed to target a player above their shoulders. In other words, don't, don't hit them in the head, okay? Right, Protect them with concussions, yeah. that's right. The next one is not allowed to hit a defensive player. And I like this a lot. You'll see a lot of times a free safety, especially the guy's down, almost down. He kind of comes in and kind of spears him at the end. That's ridiculous. He's already down. That's going to be a penalty now. Okay, so that's a good thing. And then on the kickoff, I think the fans will recognize this a little bit because no longer are a couple of those guys going to get the 10, 15 yard head start and run down there to cover the kick five yard max. So they'll all be pretty much up there right about the line of scrimmage where the ball is. The guy will kick it. They have to be evenly distributed for at least on either side. Those are the ones the fans will see. The other rules are good, safety involved, but probably we'll never see them called. And that's a good one on kickoffs too because yep. that's where you see the hardest collisions yeah. where you can really gather ahead of steam running downfield. So limiting yeah. that to five yards should be I think so pretty too. You, you get a big old linebacker, man, he gets ahead of steam up. He's just going to steamroll some guys on the way to the ball. So it, it's, it's all about safety. I'm all for it. Great. Looking to keep those players yeah. safe all season long yep. out there. Moving on now to new coaches. Yeah. There's a handful of new coaches yeah. in the area. And I we counted see, 11 real quick. That's a bunch. That, that is a lot. Yeah. We see that yeah. a lot from year to year, but it does yeah. feel like there's more than yeah. usual this year. And I think because uh, they're very significant, long time, very successful. I call them legends. Right. You know, if yeah. you can win over and over and over in high school, I think you're a legend because you're dealing with new kids every year. Absolutely. Um, and just a couple. I'll mention a couple. I, I put two legends move on. Jerry Cooper left LCC, went down to Tennessee. Of course, Scott Pulte replaces him at LCC. Uh, the other legend that moves on, Mike Mock from Kenton, uh, down in Missouri now, coaching close to his kids, good for him. And Brent Fackler takes over for him. Good stability in both those programs because those guys are longtime assistants, very experienced coaches, taking over a program. They shouldn't miss much of a beat. And then I put one legend moves on because Doug Fry, left Wapak, but went to St. Mary's, New kind of back right. to St. Mary's, you know? So. Uh, and and uh, so, you know, that'll be a, a whole new dynamic in the WBL, but Travis Moyer replaces him at Wapak, and of course he's back in familiar territory. And then I, I, I thought we ought to mention uh, at least one return to varsity play because Harden Northern last year played a JV schedule. They're back to varsity play this year, playing an independent schedule before they move into a league next year. And Mike Dennis comes off that Macomb staff. Macomb lost three guys to yeah. go be head coaches. So that Chris you know, Algae, Chris Algae tree. that's right, right, man. He's doing a good job up there um, making coaches. But uh -huh. Mike Dennis goes down to start that Harden Northern program into a varsity program. So those are the three I picked out. Yeah, and those are all great. And there's even a couple more we could talk about that Mike Dennis we met with on the warm-up. He's really excited. The guys are energized there, and that's a young group. And luckily, they kept their JV program together out there at Harden Northern. And also, how about Tyler Turner at Waynesfield Goshen? He's a young guy, just 25 years yeah. old. And Great mix there of experience on the coaching staff with Ernie Simpson. Yeah, he's, he's got, got Ernie back. That'll 50 help. 50 years yeah. of experience with Ernie Simpson. And then yeah. Scott Gray's been in the program for 14 years uh -huh. and now first-year head coach with Tyler Turner. Lots to look forward to yeah. there. And Tyler is really stressing discipline. Let's hear from yeah. the Tigers' new head coach. The big thing is discipline, consistency. Um, not to say that we didn't have that last year, um, but those are two – of, of the things I would like to improve this year. Um, and even if it's just little things, um, our offense stalled a lot last year. Our defense was on the field quite a bit. And um, I truly believe defense wins championships. We have to uh, have a solid defense, but we also have to help them out, put some drives together and be more consistent on both sides of the ball. Well, lots to look forward there too for the Tigers and a great new energy there as yeah. well. And how about Bluffton? Yeah. Kyle Cutnaw, the new head coach mm -hmm. there, he was an assistant, and you talked about replacing legends. Coach Dennis Lee is another right. staple of that program that has moved on, mm -hmm. and now it's Coach Cutnaw's program. Uh -huh. Yeah, Dennis would qualify as a legend. He's there a long, long time state championship appearance in Maslin and, and uh, did a great job. Still coaching, but uh, that Bluffton job's Cutnaw's now. Right, the He'll Pirates. do a good job. And when we visited the Pirates at their training camp, Coach Cutnaw was very into a high – energy, fast-paced offense, and that's something that he knows will benefit the Pirates come week one. 
Uh, I think that the way practices are run are a little bit different. You know, we have a, a clock that goes off every five minutes, and it's really fast-paced and up-tempo. And I was joking around with the kids the other day. I was at Burger King, and, you know, the lady was taking a long time, and I was <laughs> like, come on, let's go, tempo, you know. So um, we try to really push it and, and go that way with it. We're not Chip Kelly, you know, Oregon <laughs> Philadelphia Eagles fast, but, I mean, we just try to get practice fast so we can get a lot in and get a lot done. So good to hear from Coach Cutton a lot. To look forward to there for Bluffton as well. A lot of changes coming up, but I think it's for the better in the area, and it should be a lot of fun to follow. A lot of young guys getting a, a start. You know, they put their time in as assistants, and uh, it, it, listening to the players, they're excited. They're ready to play for the new guy. It should be a lot of fun. Yep. Time for a break here on Mark's Madness. When we return, we're going to travel back in time, go back to last year's playoffs, and break down a very important play for the state champ, Coldwater Cavaliers. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Mark's Madness, joined by Mark Miller, I'm Matt Finkel. Now on Mark's Madness, each week we're going to try and break down a big play from the previous week's game, and since it's week one coming up and we don't have any games from this season, we're going back to last season and Coldwater's run to the state championship in the semifinal matchup they took on West Jefferson. It was a tightly contested game yeah. in the first half, and with about a minute to go, Coldwater had the ball on their own two-yard line in a 7-7 ball game. Well, at this point, Matt, you're just thinking about running the clock out, right? Don't get a safety. Don't turn it over. So they call a safe play. Brody Hoying, their number one offensive threat, takes it around the left side, just trying to run some clock and gain a few yards. He gains a first down. So now you got a little room to operate with, so you call one of your best plays, the lead play off the right side. Everybody gets on somebody. There's a little alley. He makes one miss. The wide receiver does a great job staying on his guy, and now it's heredity, baby. That's DNA running down that sideline right now because nobody can catch him. And what turns into let's run the clock out and go into the locker room 7-7, all the momentum has shifted to the Cavaliers. They go up 14-7. to We're going to get another look at it here, and you're going to see how people get hats on people. See, the, there, there's the alley. They seal it to the inside. Two guys, a wide receiver up top, working like crazy. The lead running back got a body, got his helmet on somebody, and now they just can't catch Brody. Even the, the uh, DBs from the other side of the field, who are their fastest players, can't catch that kid because he can really run. Yeah, tremendous play there. Just the athleticism of Brody Hoyne, and it's something they know they have coming back, and it helped lead them all the way to that state yeah. championship last mm -hmm. year and, and in his first year as a starter, and something they really have to look forward to yeah. going forward. Well, you know, you bring that kid back. You know, you, you look at the best offensive players in the area, and there's a bunch this year. We got a lot of good offensive players in the area, Without a but doubt. He, he, none any better than him. And then you look at the defensive players. Seems like all those guys graduated. Furbush is gone, and some of the other guys. Hoing's probably the best defensive player in the area. He's going to go to college and play DB. So exactly. he might be the best two-way player in the state. You know, he's really, really good. And if people haven't watched him, tune in and watch that kid. He's Absolutely. fun. Absolutely. Yeah. Brody Hoing will be going to Eastern Michigan University next fall where he'll be playing cornerback, not even be on the offensive side of the ball. He'll be on the defensive side of the ball. Time for another break here on Mark's Madness. When we come back, we're going to preview some of those week one matchups that you don't want to miss. Back here on Mark's Madness for third down, joined by Mark Miller. And Mark, it's time. We talked about yeah. it. It's fall. Week one is here. Let's talk yeah. about some of those games that you're really looking forward to. And you have yeah. to start with the matchup between Kenton and Coldwater. Well, you sure do. I mean, 26 wins between the two of them last year, a state championship. And, and this has been a great game since they started playing this to lead the season off. And, and the unfortunate thing is one really, really good team is going to be 0-1 on Saturday. Yep. You know, but it didn't bother Coldwater last year. They went ahead and won the state championship. So, you know, Kenton, new coach, new offensive coordinator, Matt Best left as all, along with Mike Mock, and a new quarterback, Grant Sherman's gone. That's a lot of important play calling, offensive strategy change. Yep. Brent Fackler had been around a long time. A lot of that staff's going to stay on, and those players have that system ingrained in them, so don't expect them to step back too far. But week one against Coldwater, that's a tough order for them. On the other hand, Brody Hoing's back. That's about all you got to say about Coldwater. Chip Otten's back. That's important, too. Yep. And a lot of other good players. But, uh, you know, this team has played 15 games a year for five straight years. That's a state record. That's never been done before, and they think they can do it again. 
and people around the area think they can too. So this is going to be another great Cavalier year, I think. Absolutely. You wonder if that takes a toll on these guys. They're so used to going to play those 15 games. Yeah. I mean, the, does, do you think that wears you down at all? Well, it would me. Of course, yeah. I was a skinny little weakling, you know. But, <laughs> but these guys, a lot of these guys will continue and go on and play basketball. And I realize Coldwater's a football school and basketball not quite so much, but they're competitive. They're yeah. good. And then baseball's phenomenal. So those State kids champs. recover. Yeah. And Hoeing was right fielder on that team. So there's a lot of the, the actually the baseball team, I called the, the regionals over here. And uh, it was like a football lineup. You right. know, they're almost yeah. all football players. So they recover and they're young and they can, they can do go. it. But 15 games, a lot of games. That's a lot of games. For sure. Another week one matchup I have my eye on, Bath against LCC. Mm -hmm. This game will be played on a Saturday, yeah. and LCC won it big last year over the Wildcats. Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be as big this year. Bath is a lot better. They got much better uh, the second half of last season. You know, I thought they really improved, and that's a mark of a, of a good coaching staff. Bill Garland does a good job, waited his turn. Now he's got the reins, and he's doing a good job. And if you can improve, start off bad. I think they start off 0-4, yes. and then you can improve and win out the second half of your season, which they did. They got 14 returning starters. That's a lot of experience. Still kind of a young team, but a lot of those guys got experience. Good offensive line, return their quarterback. That's important when you're trying to build, uh, return their linebackers. So they got some important pieces. LCC's got some some pieces too now. I mean, Scott Paldy was, was handed the keys to the Cadillac. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's got some speed. He's got some athleticism. He's got Ethan O'Connor, who might be the best throwing quarterback in our area. Um, he's got Ben Stolley back and healthy. That's huge for their line. Uh, they're going to be very, very good. But I, yeah, I think it's going to be a good game. I think uh, Bath will hang in there. I think they'll play hard. But, uh, you know, LCC, they got, they got some stuff, man. They're going to be playing for a lot of weeks. Yeah, that's going to be a good one. Yeah. And, like, on Saturday, so they get to watch some of the guys yeah. play on Friday, and then yeah. they'll go take the field on well, Saturday. Well, what's really cool, too, is all the Friday night guys get to go watch them on Saturday. Right, I exactly. mean, I used to love to do that to our local parochial school, you know. You yep. go and watch them play on Saturday night. That should be a yeah. lot of fun. Yeah. Another game I have my eye on, PG Grove. And we talked mm -hmm. about new coaches a little. Pandora Goboa has a new one, and Chris yes. Myers, he's yep. part of that Chris Algie coaching tree. He that's right. over from yeah. Macomb. Wants to run that spread offense. He'll light it up a little bit. That'll be fun. This is such a great rivalry because they're – I mean, they're right next to each other, yeah. you know, and so, you know, it doesn't matter how good the program is or whether it's rebuilding or not. This is a big game on their schedule, and, you know, you, you get going. You know, 50% of them are going to be undefeated, and the other 50% are going to win a game on Saturday. Right. So uh, I, I think Andy Schaefer in his third year feels like he's building it a little bit, you know. He's got uh, Warnicky back, a really good running back. Um, you know, he made a comment I, di I didn't notice, know this. Columbus Grove is the biggest Division Seven school in the state of Ohio. Wow. How about that? Just right below the Division Six. Didn't know 6 that thing. either. So that's an advantage for them. Absolutely. If they can get into the playoffs, they could do some damage. Yeah, that's a great. That's a great yeah. fact. I didn't yeah. know that as well. And the Rockets yeah. won that game last year, 26 to 12. So you uh -huh. know that Grove will revenge be out for a little revenge. That's right. Just to close quickly here, how important is it to get on that right foot, win yeah. at week one? It's all the coaches during when we filmed our warm up shows, everyone talked about, you know, how important it is yeah. to week one to win week one. And now yeah. we're here and like you said, fifty percent of the teams yeah. aren't gonna be there. So how important is it to get off on that right foot? Well, you brought up a great point too. You only play ten regular season games in high school football. That's ten percent of your season that week one. So that's a big chunk. It's also the game you look forward to for nine months, you yeah. know? You've I mean, that's the one that's up on the board. It doesn't matter if it's non-league, league, rivalry, not. That's the one that gets you going. So it is really, really important. But we see every year, like Coldwater last year, you lose to a quality team, the coaching staff doesn't panic, they hang right in there. The next week they came back and beat Columbus Hartley, a yep. bad, you know, 49 to 16 or something. So it can be done, but I'd sure rather be 1-0 on Saturday than 0-1, no doubt about that. Uh, the key, I think, is to get off, play solid football, stay healthy. You don't want to have a lot of injuries that first week because then you think, uh-oh, we're snake bit this, week, this year. Um, but, yeah, it's important, really important. So we got a lot to look forward to week one on Friday. You can see all three games that we talked about here on WOSN and the family of networks. Also, Marion Harden at Lima Senior. You'll be on the call oh, yep, for Mark that Shine one. and I'll have that one. Along with yep. Shawnee at Marion Local. So plenty of action we have you covered. And thanks for joining us here on Mark's Madness. We'll see you next time.